Evening. So today we have another video tutorial, and this is actually in response to a question that I got in the Facebook group, which asked folks, I, I asked folks, oh, what question would you like to ask me? And I'll, I'll answer it in a Facebook Live. So Emma has written to me and said, what's the best way to manage client information, digital and paperwork, as I'm a visu visual person? So I thought this was a great opportunity to talk you through the Trello board template that I use with um, all of my projects at Blue Wire, not to mention all of my clients. Evening, Peter. Uh, so how are you doing, mate? So what, what I want to do is um, share with you the link where you can download it, which is just down the bottom here, bluewiremedia.com.au slash Trello. There's no option or anything required, it takes you straight to a Trello board. Now, what I'm going to do is share my screen with you, and then I can show you exactly how it's going to work. So, just type bluewiremedia.com.au slash Trello into uh, Google or into the, into the browser. And what you're going to see here, I'll just take away the question for now. What I'm going to do is um, show you how this Trello board works, because I'm quite a visual person as well. I like to see where tasks are. And in fact, if I move my camera around a little bit, you'll see a whole bunch of post-it notes up against the wall. So each week there's my my wins from last week, my three to do's this week, and where I'm stuck. So that's the process that I go through with the actual old school sticky notes. What Trello allows us to do, sorry, yes, what Trello allows us to do is have sticky notes, but digitally, and it's a good way for multiple people in different locations to collaborate on what needs to get done. So to answer your question, Emma, Trello is one of the tools that I use. It's not the only one, like I store information on Google Drive, I use Basecamp for certain things. We can maybe dive into those on another call. But this session, I'm going to show you the Trello board. So firstly, if you want to get your own copy, which I recommend doing, because this one is free to use and share, but it's locked down to, to myself and Tobes. So what you want to do is go to show menu. You want to hit the back arrow and then you want to go more and then you want to go copy board and then you can name that and create that and that will be your own editable copy. So let's go through and do that again for those that are following along. Show menu, more, uh, copy board, and then you create, whoops, you can't actually see that. Uh, you can hit that little green create button down the bottom there. All right, so that's how it works to get your own copy. This is my master copy that I'm sharing with you now. So there are instructions on the left-hand side here, but I'm gonna talk you through that right now. So the first three columns there, they're optional, but I, I do recommend them. The real action happens over on the far right as we get more tactical. So, but let's just start at the front and you don't need to have these, these three columns if you don't want to. But basically what you've got is your main column for like your big, hairy, audacious goal. If you're um, a Jim Collins student like myself, a BHAG, your values, your 12 month goals. So what I like to do is actually document them in here. So you might just type in your 12 month goals, whatever they happen to be for you. And you can add the card and it's there. So that's good. What, what then happens, I'll just get out of that, is that you can then go from 12 months or big hairy audacious goals and then look at the next 90 days. So I typically work with private clients and work on three key projects for 90 days. So that's where you would add them in here. This way you're making sure that your big long-term goals are aligned to the specific tactical tasks, tasks that you're doing on a daily basis. 
Again, these columns are optional, but I do recommend them. Then you've got your ongoing tasks. Actually, I'll just leave it there. Then the third column is your ongoing tasks. So at some stage, there's going to be tasks that you just do every day. They don't need to be a specific weekly uh, project. Things like following up opportunities. Um, I don't know, sending a regular weekly newsletter. So if that, if that, once that becomes a habit and it's ingrained, just stick them in the, op, in the ongoing column so that you don't get your um, weekly task too, too cluttered. So they're optional, but the real action, folks, is in these four columns that you can see on the screen here. The backlog, to do, in progress, and done. The beauty of this is that in terms of managing your own tasks, or maybe you're helping a client manage their tasks, but you can actually, um, so you can go into each of these and edit them. So if we want to change the words there, which is just a bit of gobbledygook, you might have design, version one, version one of a logo, for example. So that's in there. What we do in the backlog is that's where we keep track of all our different ideas. And folks, if you're actually watching along at home, just leave a comment uh, saying live. If you're watching the replay, just leave a comment saying replay so I know who's watching when. Um, yeah, so the backlog is where we keep all of our ideas. So no doubt after a client meeting, after reading a book, listening to a podcast, watching a Facebook Live, what have you, there's a whole bunch of ideas that you have. What I like to do is keep all those ideas in the backlog. So the beauty of Trello is that you can actually move these tiles around and and reorganize them. For some reason I can't on the iPad, I don't know why that is, but that must just be, I normally do it on my desktop. Hazy watching live, how are you mate? I'll, uh, I'll move your comment on there, there we are. Great to see you bud. But what you can do is you can actually move these tasks around it's just not letting me do that on the iPad never mind but you get the idea you keep all your ideas in the backlog and then once you start you can then move tasks around so you drag them from this tile from this part into the to do it's playing up for you now but that's just one of the fun things about live Facebook lives or live workshops when things don't quite work on a new device that's uh, nothing you can do about that but anyway, you can just drag them across. Uh, and so then you don't lose any ideas because they're all going into the backlog. Then what you want to do for the to-do column, which is this next one, whoops, is lay out what you're committing to getting done this week in the next seven days. So you drag them across from backlog over to to do so that's your task for this week then you drag the task across to the in progress column or the in progress lane depending on the lingo you want to use drag it to the in progress lane once you've actually started that project that task and then once that has been properly shipped submitted published sent off then you drag it off into the final column which is the done column all right so this way you've got a visual representation of not only all of your ideas in the backlog, but specifically the focus on what to do this week, what's actually in progress now. So you should be continuing to complete those tasks until they're across in the done column. And then you go back to the to-do list to see what's the highest priority of what's left. There we go. So there we have it. That is how I like to keep track of tasks and activities, client stuff. If you want to be more sophisticated, you can actually go in here, Emma, and everyone watching, Hazy and Peter and people watching the replay, and you can add attachments, you can set due dates, you can assign labels if you're visual. So you might pick a color and make it purple. 
you might assign it to a member so I could allocate it to Tobes. If I didn't want to do the work, I'd maybe allocate it to him or I'd do it myself. So there's all these different things you can add attachments. So you can actually keep a document if you're working um, on a client piece of work um, and submit it through this. You can leave comments on a particular task by adding it in here. You can add a description of what the project is and you can collaborate and write comments and feedback and everything else. So you can see how it's a great way to manage all the tasks going on, keeping them aligned to the greater goal, which is your 90 day projects and your BHAG and everything else. Hey Lou, how you doing? Nice to see you. Hazy's there too. Um, yeah, so this is, this is how I do it. Very simple, very easy to do, and you don't lose any tasks. Every now and again, your backlog gets unmanageable because it's so long with so many wonderful ideas you've had over the last few few weeks or months. Uh, at, I do cleanse it every so often, every at least 90 days I go back and think, was this wonderful idea that I had three months ago that wonderful? If it still doesn't excite me, if it still isn't interesting, then I can just archive it. Um, archive the task. All right, question. Here we go from Hazy. If you have two or three in a team or work group, Trello can be shared amongst the team? Question uh, mark. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So, Hazy, if you wanted to invite somebody to this particular Trello board, you hit the invite button and you enter their email address. And then they, it can be a public board or a private board. This one's public because I'm sharing it with you. Normally they're private because they're, they're private. And you can have multiple people collaborating. A client, uh, a client, yourself, maybe one of your people on your team, someone on the client's team. If there's a third party agency or advisor or whatever, they can all come and collaborate on the board together. So there you have it, Hazy. I'll take the question off the screen. Attempting to take the question off the screen. Um, yeah. Okay, next question is, let me just throw it up so we can all see it. Updates by all of the team are seen live by all. Okay, I think so. I suspect there's privacy settings. I've never had any need to go super private in terms of like, okay, I post something, but, but you can't see it, Shane, but Lou can, for example. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I think, assume that the Trello board is visible to uh, everybody that's on it. That said, you can actually, if you do have multiple people working on it, you can filter by, like if we've all got tasks, you can filter it to see just what you've got to work on this week. Hazy? Uh, so, yeah, you don't need to see like all five collaborators and their tasks. It might get too messy and confusing. You can just filter it by show me my tasks. And that way you know what you've got to work on, but then you can zoom out and see everybody's. And at the end of your week, do your weekly catch up meeting and look at your to-do list, look at the done column and pat yourselves on the back, have yourself a virtual celebratory non-alcoholic beer or whatever you choose to have. Um, so yeah, Trello board template, I find it super useful. The URL is just down there. Thanks for your questions, Hazy, and turning up, Peter, Lou. With that, I'm gonna call that a night unless there's any more questions, nope. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again uh, for the next one in the series.